We've given out, we've given out Bible assignments now. We've talked about relationships and, and how to approach things and, and changing ourselves up to be uh, wise in the things we do. So we've had a good pre-service conversation. Amen. Amen. And uh, today is July 4th, Independence Day, 2015. And we're going to talk about, and we're going to learn some things about what's going on currently and how our founders uh, uh, set things up and, and where we're at. And, and we're going to learn some things about the foundation of God. The foundation of God that the founders used to uh, develop and set the foundation for this country. And you know what? That's, that's what we're going to learn. And perhaps uh, in time we'll be able to see that happen again. I don't think so because I believe that the end times are, are pretty much upon us and uh, uh, one of the things that we have to see that if, if a big coalition of uh, countries are going to come against Israel, who has to be at a diminished capacity? The United States has to be at diminished capacity. Something has to come around to diminish us from being able to be the savior of Israel. Because when everything comes against Israel, you don't see in prophecy where the United States steps in, but Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, steps in and stands on the Mount of Olives and saves Israel. And that's their witness, and that's the time they come on to salvation. And uh, so uh, I believe that the things that we see happening in, in our United States as they are, they're, it's a plan of God, it has to happen. Um, but now what we have to do is how is our response in the things that are happening so let's learn about let's learn about our country let's learn about our independence let's learn about our founders and let's let's see what's going on in today's world and father god we just thank you today we thank you for insights we thank you for that you give us the wisdom and you give us the anointing to be able to speak by your spirit as you showed me this morning and uh, i absolutely uh Enjoy this message. It's uh, in some places it's a tough message, but we need to have those tough messages, and we need to be able to stand firm on the things that that you stand firm on. And Father God, we just thank you that you give us your grace to be able to do so. And we thank you for today's message in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. America built on the foundation of faith. Our country was built on the foundation of the rock, Jesus Christ. He is the cornerstone of every, of our very existence. He is the cornerstone of our very existence. Matthew 7, 24, Jesus speaking. Matthew 7, 24, Jesus speaking. Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. For 170 years, our country stood steadfast on a foundation of faith. God in our government, God in our schools. Children were actually taught the Bible in school. School was opened with prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, which meant every child on a daily basis pledged their allegiance to this republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I know that because I pledged it every day I went to school. And I, I bet you pledged that when you went to school. And most of you probably pledged that when you went to school. And there's where patriotism started from the time we were young, that we were saying that this is our republic and we're, we're pledging our allegiance to know what that means and to know who we are in that and, and, and to, to, to stand for the principles that were laid out by our founding fathers. 
with our nation built on the foundation of the rock of Christ, what liberty and justice do you think our pledge is talking about? The liberty and justice that comes from God in Christ. Our founders were men that read the word of God and understood the precepts laid out from and for men to follow. Matthew 7, 26, And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. The strength of the foundation of a nation and a united people is in the effectiveness of passing that foundation from generation to generation. And that's what we, that's what we were doing by saying the Pledge of Allegiance. So we were doing by, by bringing the Bible. The Bible, I mean, my, my goodness, the, the Founding Fathers were the ones that started the Bible Institute. That started the ability to hand out Bibles. That the Bible was the primary learning uh, 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 book in primary school for a hundred years. Which means the effectiveness of the foundation, the strength of our foundation was solid for 170 years. We are now seeing the effects of our house that was once built on the foundation on the rock of the liberty and justice of God in Christ to being dismantled piece by piece and rebuilding our nation on the sands of disbelief, secular humanism, immorality, and tyranny. And what happens when you build your house, build your foundation on the sand? Verse 27, Matthew 7, 27. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And great was the fall of it. Our house, this nation, the United States of America, is no longer sitting on the rock of its foundation. It's no longer sitting on that place of stability that when the winds blow and the rains come, that it stands firm against those things in unity, trusting in the living God and us being able to react with his wisdom and his presence to every situation that comes. Now we're being split apart, we're being dismantled by secular humanism, by immorality, by tyranny. This nation, which is truly once under God and the foundation of God is now, has put God aside. And man sees upon himself his own pride, sees within himself his own doings and his own wantings, and that is the flesh. And this is the experience of the fall that comes from the pride of man. We can look back at our 239 years of being a nation and see that great move of grace upon us as we stood together on the rock of our foundation, a nation built with God in Christ. But, our, but around 170 years after we made this establishment on the rock, giving us liberty, and that word liberty in Hebrew is the word rakab, large, roomy expansion in every direction that's the liberty large roomy expansion in every direction so the liberty that we have been given in god's grace to expand the word of god the kingdom of god in every direction this is the liberty that we've been given and we can literally see that this has taken place around the world more preaching of the gospel has emanated from the United States than from any other nation in history. 
Liberty is not each person doing what they want, when they want, in their own selfish and moral pursuits. That's not liberty. That's not the liberty that the founding fathers saw us having. Liberty is the anointing empowered by grace to expand and enlarge the knowledge of God and his kingdom given to us in Jesus Christ. This is the liberty that Jesus, Yeshua, God in the flesh, spoke of in Luke 4, 8, which he spoke from Isaiah 61, 1, and Isaiah 42, 7. Luke 4, 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to declare the good tidings that your salvation is here, and to show you to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives that were captives as prisoners of war what war the war of good and evil the war of god and the devil the war of rebellion and obedience i've come to preach deliverance to those who have been wrapped up in this war between God and the devil, between good and evil, between rebellion and obedience. And that's each and every one of us. It's every single person that has ever lived after the fall of Adam has been a captive to the fall of mankind. The verse continues, and recovery of sight to the blind which literally means the physical blindness, mental blindness, and spiritual blindness. Through Messiah, we can once again see Father God, love expressed in all His goodness. We are no longer blinded by rebellion. We are no longer blinded by the dictates of the flesh and this ever-present evil world. The eyes of our hearts are open wide to see the outpouring of the goodness of the love of God. Verse 18 continues. To set at liberty them that are bruised. This word liberty in the Greek is aphesis. Aphesis, liberty, meaning freedom to experience the deliverance of the forgiveness in the remission of our sins. The word bruise, thorough, means bruise in the Greek, to be crushed, destroyed by sin, by rebellion, by this ever-present evil world, crushed in a life of hopelessness, separated from God, our Creator, our Father. <laughs> but God, but God, Christ has come to bring us the freedom the liberty to experience the deliverance of the forgiveness of our, the remission of sins in our life through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We're no longer to be crushed and destroyed with hopelessness separated from God. But God in Christ has delivered us, set us at liberty from the life of hopelessness to the life of hope. For Jesus Christ is our hope of glory. He is our Redeemer. He is our liberty, our freedom. Our freedom from the crushing confines of this rebellious, of the rebellious fall of man. He has given us the liberty, the freedom to come boldly to the throne of grace. We are free to interact with our Heavenly Father once again we are living in the acceptable year of the Lord the freedom of living in the Jubilee for all eternity our founders knew this we hold these truths this is a declaration of independence we hold these truths what truths the truth, that is, the truth that is given to us in the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. 
The Word is the Word of Truth, and the Spirit of God is the Spirit of Truth. Our founders knew this. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, equal in Christ, one new man. These were Bible readers. These were men that, that, that lived their lives according to the Bible. They knew and understood the concept of one new man in Christ. There is no Jew, Gentile, black, white. We are all one new man, all equal in Christ. When the man receives Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they become one and the same with each other. For we are the likeness in the image of God. And when I see Michael, I see the likeness and image of God. I see myself. I, and he sees God in me and I see God in him. And we come together we're one new man in Christ Jesus our founders understood that there's no difference how do we know this is what they meant by reading the next statement in the Declaration of Independence that they are endowed by their Creator all men are equal in Christ that they're endowed all men are created equal right endowed by the creator in other words they've got right because everything we do in our lives and everything that we create that god shows us has to be god-centered our marriages have to be god-centered our lives have to be god-centered we go to work what do we do we don't work on to the corporation we work on to the lord okay god-centered thought so when they were writing this out when the writer was writing this out he understood that what he was writing was god-centered that they are endowed by their creator with, uh, with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, the life that is given to us in Christ, the forgiveness of our sins unto everlasting life with him. Because remember, he's talking God-centered. That's a God-centered writing. So life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So life, what life is he talking about? What's been given to us by our creator? What did he give to us by our creator in Christ, but everlasting life and the forgiveness of our sins in Christ Jesus, amen? Liberty, freedom to live the life given to us to experience the deliverance given to us in the forgiveness and, re and remission of our sin, enabling us to expand the liberty, this liberty, in every direction. That we can bring this liberty, we can bring this place, this, this forgiveness with its remission of sins, this deliverance from the world into the kingdom, that we have the liberty to take it in every direction and we've seen that the United States do that over the last 239 years and the pursuit of happiness happiness is a synonym is synonymous with the blessing you can be translated in uh, the Beatitudes in the Sermon on the Mount it could be translated uh, happy is the man or blessed is the man they're synonymous together we are to seek the kingdom first and foremost why for the kingdom is our blessed life blessed means to have benefits placed upon us when we are blessed we're having the benefits of the king and his kingdom placed upon us so we pursue the happiness of blessing that God the Father has given to us at the cross of Calvary the first greatest blessing is for us to seek is the cross the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Christ. This is this is the blessing. This is the true blessing. The, the greatest benefit that God could pour out upon us that we should seek, that we are given, that 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 life, liberty, and the pursuit of the cross, the pursuit of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the pursuit of the happiness of being at one with God in the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior. For this is the greatest benefit, the greatest blessing, and we are to seek out the happiness of this. There is great joy. What is the kingdom but righteousness, peace, and joy? So when we're, we're in pursuit of happiness, we're pursuing our position of peace. We're, we're pursuing the emotion 
of joy which is given to us in the kingdom of God. Amen? When first seeking the kingdom of God, we are seeking the intimate presence of our king. And in the presence of, of and in the presence of our king is our happiness. And a result of being in his presence, others see the result of the blessing of being at one with God, our king. All these things, benefits will be added to you when you seek the blessing of your salvation, the happiness of your salvation, the presence of your king. For that's the greatest blessing upon us. That's the greatest happiness upon us is being in the presence of the king. And all these things, all these benefits will be added to you, Matthew 6.33. In the Declaration of Independence, our founders gave us the foundation of kingdom life. And for 170 years, we saw the outpouring of the results of a people who pursued the blessing of God. A people that revered God in all their ways. A people who loved the Word and revered God his moral standards. We are not a people now that is, are revering God's moral standards. A whole world saw the results of a nation that sought the presence of God, which is the ultimate blessing, the place of complete happiness. The world saw all things that they clamored after manifesting in the United States. This country was a country that was envied by the whole world. There was a Frenchman that came around the turn of the century, of the last century, the 1900s, and he wanted to see how it is that, that America, this new country, was was expanding so greatly and, 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 and how, how it was so prosperous. And then we started, you know, that was the, the, the uh, uh, what do they call it, the, the mechanical revolution. We started with the factories and everything. We started, and he came in and he saw all these great things that were happening, but he stayed with this family and that family. And he asked a lot of questions. And he said, the one thing that I know that is different, industrial revolution is what I was thinking of, he said, the one thing that I see that is different in all the people I've stayed with and all the people I've talked to is a people whose fervent desire is for the Lord. A people whose fervent desire is for the Lord. He said, that, this is what, not the fact that we had great factories or, or that we were moving on and our economy was getting grown. He, he attributed the fact of all these things being added to us and it being expressed in the, and manifest in the physical were related to a people who is giving their lives to the Lord. He said they were a people of great faith. Whether they, and, and they, I mean, they envied the countries, they envied us worldwide. Whether they wanted to admit it or not, they knew that our prosperity was by the blessing, the providence of God. But in the 1940s, the Supreme Court, just like today, started ruling against God. That was when they twisted the concepts of the Constitution by using a term separation of church and state, which is not in the Constitution, it's not in the Federalist Papers, it's not in the Declaration of Independence. It was in a letter from Jefferson to the Baptist Assembly explaining to them that there is a wall now built, a wall of separation between church and state, that the state cannot force the church to be a specific denomination like the church and he was addressing specifically the church of england if you were in england you had to be a part of the church of england the state regulated this is your denomination this is how you're going to worship jesus christ okay there was no room for other denominations so all all jefferson says the the government will not move in and tell you 
how to worship Jesus Christ. If you're going to be a Baptist, you can be a Baptist. If you're going to be a Protestant, you can be a Protestant. If you're going to be a Methodist, you can be a Methodist. Okay? And it was all about Christian... All this has been about Christian denominations. had nothing to do with Buddhists. had nothing to do with, with, with Muslims. When they talk about the freedom of religion, because they didn't consider a Buddhist or a Muslim to be a, a real religion, so have not a religion at all. So our founders didn't recognize them as religions. They recognized the different denominations, the Christian denominations, as the true religions of God. And so when they said the freedom of religion, they were talking about the freedom of denominations of Christianity. That's a fact. And they have used this to take God out of our government. That statement, separates the church and the state. The atheist Madeleine O'Hare used this in 1960 to take prayer out of the schools. Another Supreme Court ruling. When we then had Roe versus Wade, Wade in 72, where another uh, 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 Supreme Court ruling, where now 50 million babies have been murdered since 1972 under the ruling of unjust judges. And just this year, activist judges have legislated from the bench, forcing a free people to buy a product they don't want, which is Obamacare. And nationally, redefining marriage from God's definition to man's own definition. This is a slap in the face of God. This is a slap in the face of the American people. A slap in the face of the founders of our great constitution. The founders of our nation. The people in these United States and their individual states have the right by the 10th Amendment to govern themselves. If the people vote and define a thing like marriage, which many communities have done, then this is the will of the people. One man, one woman, nine as married. That's And people have voted on this. State issue. It's not a federal government, central government issue. This is a, this is a republic. This is a democracy of 50 individual states working together for certain things. And it's not the federal government's place to step in and start mandatorily telling each state and the peoples of each state how to rule their lives. That is unconstitutional. This is a 10th Amendment issue. It's not a, uh, it's not a, it's not a uh, court issue. Nine unelected lawyers do not have the right to change that, but they have. We the people are watching the fall of the greatest God nation since the nation of Israel. The nation has turned their back on God. The nation has turned their back on life, liberty, and the blessing. But God, God always has a remnant a people that will never turn their back on him even unto death we are those people we will pray we will speak out with boldness the truths of love in the salvation of Christ we will stand and therefore stand taking upon ourselves the whole armor of God we will, we will stand with the shield of faith. We will stand with, our, with righteousness. We will stand with the gospel. We will stand in peace. We will stand and therefore stand. And we will say there is a God. He's a God of heaven. He's the God of love. And, and, and we will stand in his moral morality. And we will not deny Christ. And we will stand for Jesus. For he is the one. He is the Savior. He is the light of the world. He is life liberty he is our happiness and we will stand and we will not give up we are a people with fortitude we are a people with the grace of god god's ability added to our lives to walk through this in these end times we will not give up we will get up and proclaim jesus is Lord. Father God, Jesus is Lord. Yeshua HaMashiach, our Messiah, 
God in the flesh. And we give you all the glory, Father God. This is your land. This is everything, even to the cows on a thousand hills. It's all yours. The earth is yours and everything in it thereof. And you are coming back to stand and make your claim. And we will stand with you and we will declare with our last breath, Jesus is Lord. We will reverence you, sir. We will fear you. We will reverence you and your morality. And we will walk out your ways upon this earth. We will be the example of love. We will show kindness. We will show goodness. We will show patience. And we will do the things that you've asked us to do. And we will not waver. For we have your grace by faith. And we will rely on this in these last days. And we will be ready. And our spirits and our souls and our bodies will stand for you until we can stand no more. They might cut off our heads, but the last thing I will say, the last thing Mike will say, the last thing that every person that reads this will say is Jesus is Lord. And Father God, we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I don't like to leave uh, any service without the opportunity of offering a place that, that your place, a place saved for you. Jesus went back to heaven to make a place for you. And I would ask you today to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Make him the Lord of your life. Say, today I confess, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died for me. He was hung on the cross and he, he died, but he also resurrected from the dead. And I stand in his blood. And I receive the sacrifice that makes me whole with God. And if you've said that prayer, you are born again. Say, Jesus, I ask you to baptize me with your Holy Spirit and power. And when he does, you have your own prayer language and you speak out that prayer language and you give your life to God and you listen to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit and you follow that voice. Read your word, get a Bible, contact us. Our information is uh, uh, right to uh, RSF, Dominion of Love uh, Incorporated. Dominion of Love? No. RSF Dominion of Love. <laughs> We're incorporated back for you to give your tithes and offerings. We have that. International Inc. Okay. Because because I need to get that. I do need to get that done in terms of the uh, doing business as. Um, but write us. Um, RSF Dominion of Love International Inc. Um, let us know that you got born again. I will send you some materials. Uh, if you're in this area, North Fort Worth, come and be a part of that. If you, it's on your heart to give, use that. RSF, Dominion of Love International, Inc. And send your letters, send your, your, your uh, prayer requests, and send your offerings, your love gifts to uh, 13625 U.S. Highway 287, Fort Worth, Texas. 76179. We love you, we love this country, and we love our God, and we will stand together till the last day. We're going to stand and therefore stand, taking on the whole armor of God. We love you, and we'll see you next week.